You guys wanna hear a secret? I'm gonna share a secret with you today about how I get curriculum for as cheap as possible. So if you want to know how I do that, stay tuned. Okay, it's no secret here. If you have been here for any time at all, you know that I like to thrift, right? If you are new here, I'm Tony, and I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids, but I love to thrift. I love to find a good deal. That is my favorite. That is my favorite thing, is finding a good deal. Even if we were billionaires, I guarantee I would still shop at the thrift store because I just love the thrill of finding a good deal. I'm serious, I'm totally serious. So, as a homeschool mom, curriculum is expensive. It was expensive a couple years ago. Now, oh, uh, like, I don't know. Some of the stuff that I took for granted, how cheap it was, is now the price is going up because I don't know, I think there's no paper, I don't know what the deal is, but anyway, it's expensive. So we've gotta figure out how are we gonna do this cheaply? How are we gonna give a good education to our children and making sure that they're getting everything that they need to learn just to get a good education, but without breaking the bank and making it so that we have to live in a cardboard box. It would be really hard to homeschool in a cardboard box. <laughs> it would be really hard. We're gonna make sure that doesn't happen and I'm gonna give you some tips on how I make sure that we get the best possible deal on our curriculum. This is not a specific curriculum thing. This is just in general, how do we do this? So first thing, this is gonna shock you guys. Okay, make sure you're sitting. Thrift stores. Okay, I, I've talked about this many times. So you may be like, well, duh, Tony, we know that. Okay, you probably know that. But there's some of you that maybe don't and have not looked for curriculum at your thrift stores. Now, I will put out a disclaimer. I don't know if it's a disclaimer, but I know that there's some of you guys that live in areas where they don't have great thrift stores and that makes my heart hurt. I'm sad for you because I am blessed with amazing thrift stores here. Now I grew up in an area where I don't think our thrift stores were that great. I mean, that was a long time ago, but still it wasn't like amazing, but right now I live in an area where we are just booming with thrift stores and it's awesome. Also, it's a big homeschooling area, so we find homeschool curriculum at the thrift store all the time. So if you have other homeschoolers in your area and it's kind of a big accepted thing, please check your thrift stores because you're gonna find stuff, I guarantee. If not, I will give, the second step is gonna be for you guys that can't find it at the thrift store. But this video is inspired by what I got last week. You're not gonna believe it. I've been homeschooling for, my oldest is in eighth grade, so nine years if we're gonna count kindergarten, but I really started her in preschool, so whatever, nine, 10 years, however long you wanna call it. I've been homeschooling for quite a while. I have come to the realization with four kids that don't take this the wrong way, but the first handful of years, it really doesn't matter when it comes to science, history, it really doesn't matter what you use for stuff like that because I really don't think they're gonna remember a whole lot of it in the end. If yours remember everything, whoop de doo that's awesome. Mine just, it didn't really click for many years. And then they get to an age where it clicks and then it really matters what you're using. But I don't think it really is that big of a deal. I wanna make sure I'm exposing them to history and exposing them to science and things like that. But I really don't think they're gonna grasp all of it and I'm fine with that. It's my older kids that I'm really, you know, focused on certain curriculum with that. Now when it comes to reading language and math, I do have favorites and I do think that that matters, definitely matters. And I'm not gonna go into that in this video. I have had, I'll link a video above that talks about math. Actually, I use the same thing for reading math and language. So I'll link one of those videos above and you can check out what that is. But as for my younger kids and history and science, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do, use next year. And I'm not 100% sure, but I, might just use what we've been using, but I know with my first grader who will be in second grade, he's not gonna get any of that. Like he's not gonna, he's just different. I, I don't know if it's the boy in him or it's just him, but he's never, he, it's gonna be years before he's gonna sit still and listen to a story about, uh, I don't know, some historical something that happened and what the details are and whatever. He's just not, it, it is what it is. I have accepted it. Well, at the thrift store the other day, I found something that I really think is doable for him and I don't know how I'll group my kids together yet, but at least I had him in mind for this. You're not gonna believe the deal. Okay, so first thing is I saw this. I was shopping with my daughter. I was picking her up from somewhere and we were like, let's just stop in the thrift store that we don't go to very much. It's a different one because they never have anything. <laughs> well, they did this time. 
So I found this, which is my story, My Country, My World by Masterbooks. And I'm like, whoa, that's like Masterbooks. I've never used Masterbooks before. This is like the whole entire curriculum. I flipped through it like a couple times to make sure none of it has been written in. It's a, uh, it's a consumable book, so it can be written in um, and, and not one page has been written in. And that's amazing. So I'm like, I looked at the price and I was like, oh, this is only a dollar. I don't know how much this is online. I'll look it up and let you guys know. But I thought, even though I've never used this, I honestly don't know a ton about master books just because I've never used it. But I know a lot of people that do. And I thought, okay, for second grade, this is has a number two on it, so I'm assuming it's kind of second grade. So my second grader, I thought this would be perfect to just introduce him to our country, our world, you know, social studies kind of thing. And I think he'll sit still, it's like two pages per lesson. And for a dollar, you can't beat that. Then next to it, I found this one, which is called Let's Talk Science Adventures in the Physical World, which is also master books. And this was also the level two. So somebody who got this either didn't like it or didn't use it or whatever. We all have curriculum on our shelves that we didn't use, but it has not been written in at all. And it was also a dollar. And I thought that was amazing. So I sat there for a minute and I started to like research it on my phone. I was like, no, it's a dollar a piece. Even if I don't use it, I'll give it to somebody or I'll sell it or whatever. So I went ahead and got it, went to the front and guess how much it was. Books were half priced and I didn't realize that. 50 cents for this and 50 cents for this. And I was like, I've got to tell my friends about this. You guys have got to shop at the thrift store, please. Just look, and I told you, this is a thrift store that never has anything. We've a couple of times gotten like a shirt there, or I don't know, maybe I've gotten a mug or something random. I don't know, I probably didn't buy a mug, but something, you know, for the house or something. But really, I, I, I don't ever find anything there, and we don't go there often at all because of that, but keep checking. That's what you have to do with thrifting. You've got to keep checking because you never know what you're going to find. Whoever this mom is, thank you for donating this because I think this will be fun for my son for next year. And whether I, if I look through it and like it for my other two, maybe I'll bring one of them to this age. I'll have to do some more research, but for 50 cents a piece, come on. Okay. So just please check your thrift stores. You never know. I know you're saying, well, mine never has anything good. Please check it, because I, I, this is proof. The store never has anything, and it did. Okay, I'm gonna calm down now, but I just wanted to let you guys know that. Last year, I showed you guys that our spelling curriculum, I actually had been looking at Evan Moore, and I thought about using that last year, but I hadn't totally decided. I don't remember, they were like 16 bucks a book or something. And then I randomly found the two, I think two of the levels that I needed, at the thrift store for like $1.50 or a dollar or something like that each. So we tried it and we ended up loving it. The cool thing is if you find it at the thrift store, it's not that big of a deal if you don't like it. Like if we start this and I'm like, oh, this is lame, I don't like it, it was 50 cents, it's not the end of the world. It, I didn't pay, you know, $35. I didn't pay that much and then have to slug through the year like, well, I, I have a lot of money into this, we have to keep going, you know? You know that feeling? Okay, so check your thrift store, check your thrift store, check your thrift store. All right, let's move on. The second thing, if you really don't have thrift stores in your area, I know I've met some of you guys lately, well, met you, you know, you've messaged me, like from Australia and like all over the world, and that is exciting. I love it, because I live in Ohio, and I don't know any Australians, so anyway, that was cool. I met somebody, met somebody the other day from Australia. But uh, I know that things may be totally different for you guys. So if you really don't have any thrift stores near you, or if your thrift stores are crazy expensive, or if they just don't have anything, or maybe you're the only homeschooler in your area, then this might not work for you. Second step would be if you're in that category or even if you are and you just didn't find what you need, you need to check Facebook Marketplace or uh, homeschool resale sites because now I'm seeing this pop up all over the place where this is the time where people are selling their curriculum from last year, probably so that they can make money to pay for their curriculum for next year and you get it at a fraction of the cost. Sometimes you get amazing deals, sometimes it's better than new, you just never know. So that is a big one. Just make sure that uh, this is helpful if you are looking for something specific. Like if I am looking for master books, I'll probably go to a master books, buy, sell, trade, whatever site on Facebook or something like that and look for something specific that I'm looking for. That is the easiest thing to do. But you could just maybe find homes. I've seen homeschool curriculum swap website 
Facebook page, stuff like that. Most of them are on Facebook, but I'm sure there's other ways. eBay, that's another one too. My sister is big on eBay and I have looked on there. I've never bought anything on eBay, but I do know they sell homeschool curriculum on there too. So just check these different for sale sites, find stuff cheaper. So you don't have to pay full price because there are plenty of people that either bought it and it ended up not working for their family. Maybe they wrote in the first lesson or a couple lessons or something. Maybe they didn't write in it at all. Totally worth it. I, I love when somebody else paid full price and then I get to pay a lot less and it's still really nice and new. So that is the second thing. The third thing I would say is ask your friends. This is something you may not have thought of, but if you have friends that use similar curriculum or you have friends that use a curriculum that maybe you're interested in and their kids aren't at the same exact level as you, ask them if they're willing to sell it. Or I've heard of friends who borrow, who like this friend, you, you know, might have a 10th grader and this friend has a ninth grader. So they swap, like she uses it this year and then gives it to her and they swap back and forth. That is the way to do it. So check on your friends and find out what are they using? Do they have anything that you could use? They might even have like pieces that you need from different things. We as homeschoolers are, I just think homeschoolers are awesome. And I feel like we have a heart for each other. So you know, you might need to make some money. They might have to sell it to you, but they're not gonna, if it's your friend, she's not gonna try to squeeze you of all the money that you have. She's going to probably give you a good deal. If not, <laughs> maybe she's not a good friend. But anyway, check with your friends. I have a friend this year who, there's a curriculum that I'm considering for next year for my ninth grader. And I've talked to her already. I'm pretty sure she is not gonna use it next year. And I didn't even think to ask her because I know she had other kids that were gonna be going up and using that same curriculum. So I didn't even ask her and then I just decided to ask and she's like, yeah, I actually don't think I'm gonna use it next year. And I was like, oh, can I buy it off of you? So I'm excited. So it's not totally in the works. So I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but it, yeah, do your best to find it cheap. And then if you can't, or if it's a consumable type of thing, like a workbook or something like that, you may just have to buy off the site. Then look for sales because sometimes they will have, what is, I don't remember, somebody this week had a big like 20% off sale or I don't know, sometimes they'll have free shipping or something like that. Uh, but yeah, that would be your last resort would be, okay, just buy it new, you know, or if you go to a convention, then you, I'm pretty sure almost always get free shipping and shipping can be terrible. Sometimes shipping makes me crazy. But uh, yeah, if you buy at the convention, so if you're able to go to a convention, like the Teach Them Diligently one is one I love, but we're not gonna be able to go this year but I do love that and I know they have other conventions, but that's where you can like see the curriculum in person and even if they don't have it there, typically the ones I have dealt with, they'll let you order it through them and then they give you free shipping. So that saves you a ton of money too. So those are my tips. You can do this as cheap as possible. And if you're like, I don't have any money for curriculum this year, there are online sites. I've talked about that before too. I haven't personally used those, but I know there are a few. So just research that since I don't have any, I don't have any experience with them and I'm gonna name them, but I know there are some out there and I have friends that use some of those online where like everything they do is online and everything they do is free, which is crazy and it's kind of hard to <laughs> understand how they even make money, but whatever, you know, take it. So those are some really big, big helpful things. Um, one other that I forgot to mention is there are, I don't know if there's any other ones like this, but the good and the beautiful is one that does offer free stuff just out of the goodness of their heart. So I don't remember what age exactly it is, but some of their elementary levels of like language, I think are free, like completely free, downloadable. You print it out. It's amazing. So look, you know, find stuff like that. So if you do like the good and beautiful, that's a great one. I've also printed out, they sometimes will offer like one of their science units for free and you just download it. And if you have a color printer, you're like set and ready to go. So uh, yeah, try to shop around. I just wanted to give you guys this heads up. I know last week I did this video, I'll link this above, where I did talk about don't freak out, don't like get all overwhelmed because other people are getting ready for next year. So don't let this video overwhelm you if you're not ready to start looking for a curriculum. But if you are out, let's say you're doing school on Tuesday and then you have co-op, we have co-op on Tuesday, you have co-op and then after school you're like, we're gonna run over to the thrift store and look, look at the curriculum, look and see what they have. They may have something that like this that you've kind of been maybe thinking of or maybe have never even thought of and it's an amazing deal, grab it or do some research on your phone real quick while your kid's playing the toy section 
and see if you think it'll work for you. But it really is a money saver and then it's a stress saver and then it's a lifesaver. <laughs> That was so funny. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. You guys are great. Thank you so much for everything. Don't forget, if you have not jumped on my Mom Bod March competition that we are doing, it's not really a competition, it's an encouragement thing. Let's get fit together kind of thing. Uh, jump on. Today's only the sixth, so we're, you just, you know, jump in and catch up. It's for the whole month of March. We're trying to encourage each other to get fit. I post stuff on Instagram. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. And I also post it on the community tab of my uh, YouTube channel. So just, I'm trying to let you guys know what I'm doing and what, how I'm trying to get fit because, you know, mom bods are great, but I think, you know, it would be fun to change it a little bit, at least for me. And I know there were a bunch of you guys who have jumped on board and felt the same way. So I'm really excited. I love that you guys have joined me. If you haven't yet though, make sure you follow me on there so that you can just, you know, just be a part of that. It's really fun. Okay. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos and I will see you guys next time. Bye.